Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight. Things can get a bit weird. If you like that sort of thing. All right. Hey, welcome to the program. It is the Ron Van Dam Show. Oh, how are you? Good to be with you. You're looking really nice today. Uh, you're lovely looking. Good to see you. Um, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, I have to do this every time I start the show. For those of you that aren't familiar, I do a, a radio program, have been doing it for the past 30 years, whatever. Um, now I do it on syndicated stations and on this whole podcast thing that that has come about. So we're on all the platforms. Thank you so much. That's about it. Uh, we do a new show every weekday. Once a week, I come into this studio and we do this kind of thing where I can uh, just uh, talk to you and you can see my mouth move as I talk. It's really exciting. It's not like I have a choir behind me or a string quartet. That ain't going to happen. So what's the point? There is none. Whatever. What I do on this show is I talk about things that we all experience, yet at the same time as that's the case, uh, we don't do anything about it. We don't say anything about it because they're just simple life things that we all go through. For example, uh, just a couple of days ago, I was on my Google machine doing the internet thing. And uh, oddly enough, and it was very odd, uh, oddly enough, I'm... Uh, I'm going on to uh, a, a website that I actually pay for, okay? And I'm putting in my uh, address and then my, you know, you got to do the password thing for security purposes. So I put the password in, but I can't get into the site. Instead, there's a little thing at the bottom of the screen as I scroll down. And there it, uh, there's a box and next to the box it says, uh, I am not a robot and I'm supposed to check this box. So they're thinking, apparently, that I'm a robot. I mean, I know I'm not too exciting, but uh, to actually uh, assume that I'm a robot is a little insulting as far as I'm concerned. So if I click the box, then I'm telling them I'm not a robot, and for some reason, by doing that, all of a sudden, their response would be, oh, well, he says he's not a robot, he must not be. I don't understand. <laughs> what kind of security is that? <laughs> you know, he checked the box. He, uh, robots can't check a box. Robots can't uh, always uh, put their password in. And that's good. What are you talking about? I'm getting a little upset about this, I think. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's demeaning is what it is. I've gone through my whole life uh, trying to be a person. And now the assumption is that I could be a robot. This was never a, this was never a problem uh, in the past. I never, I never like walked into a store and uh, bought like a, a loaf of bread and gave my, my credit card and I said, wait a minute, are you a robot? And, uh, what are you talking about? Oh, wait a minute, are you an elephant by any chance? Are you an elephant? They don't care about if I'm an elephant or not. They just want to know if I'm a robot. And... I guess robots shouldn't be on their website for some reason. Uh, are there ro I mean, I've I've watched a lot of movies. I've seen uh, this, uh, you know, this uh, apocalypse thing with the zombie apocalypse, where there's zombies walking around, dead people walking around, and they're dead. And they they, uh, as a result, being dead apparently as a zombie, you don't dress all that well. No, their clothes are tattered, their mouth is uh, hanging open by their skin. They don't look so good. So, yeah, and zombies are attacking people. So I get that. You know, I understand. But it doesn't say on, on the website thing. It, there's not a box that says, are you a zombie? There I'd say, well, this just should be checked out. But I've, I've never seen any, any movies where robots take over the world posing as people trying to get into websites. I don't. This doesn't seem to be a problem for me. So I checked the box because I'm not a robot. How dare you? How dare you? Someone said that to my face, there would be problems. But because it's the internet, you, you know, you don't do anything about it. So I checked the box and I hit enter. 
I can't do anything without hitting enter. I've got to enter everything that I intend to do. So I hit the enter, but now I'm still not going to the website. I told him I wasn't a robot. What more do you want from me? Now there's a screen that comes up and it's got nine boxes on the screen. It looks like the opening to the Brady Bunch TV show. Uh, certain generations don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Brady Bunch was a TV show and they opened it up with nine boxes on the screen and the actors and they would look at each other and it was really funny. So there's nine boxes and it's pictures of streets, all of them. And on the bottom, uh, it says, uh, which pictures have a bus in it? And I'm looking at the nine of them, and, uh, you know, there's vehicles, there's cars, there's a guy on a bicycle, uh, there's a guy with a car changing a tire in the street. I mean, there's just like the, the, the very interesting depictions of, of, of street life. But three of those boxes have somewhat of a bus in them. Uh, two of them, obvious buses. The third, it's a part of a bus. It's the, it's the rear end of a bus. Now, do I consider this to be a, a bus in a picture? Well, yeah, the bus is in the picture. Is it a whole bus? No, it's a partial bus. Does it say in the description on the bottom, uh, choose the pictures that have uh, buses in them, partial or whole? No, it doesn't. It just says buses. Why am I yelling? I think I have the job. I don't have to yell, do I? Maybe some of you live really close would rather just open their windows and hear me talk. That's fine. I think it'll be a lot clearer. So I checked the three boxes that have a bus or a partial bus in them. <laughs> and and <laughs> this is so stupid. So I checked the damn thing. And uh, then the screen comes up. And there's another nine pictures. Now I have to choose which ones have a boat in them. What do, is, this, is this like a, a test to get into college? What are we doing? What are we doing? Finally, after scrutiny, great scrutiny involved, uh, including uh, scanning my birth certificate and showing my driver's license picture to the website, finally they let me in. And I thought, this is not worth it anymore. The, the zombies and the uh, robots have taken over. And I, I, just, no, I, I just don't feel secure on the internet. Uh, it's a, lo a lot of us didn't feel secure in our own lives. Now we're not secure even on the internet. Uh, it's, you know, I grew up uh, during a time where you walked into a store, you bought something, and you left the store. And at night, the store would close. They'd lock the doors. They'd put this grating in front of the window so no one could break in, into the place through the window. They put on their security alarm. They had a security system. Sometimes during the day, they'd have a security guard or somebody just watch, make sure no one was shoplifting. And that was their security. Period. End of story. You know, cost a little money, but it was, you know, it was all right. Now you want to start a business, whether it be online or in a brick and mortar, that means a store that is actually physical. Now you got to have all kinds of security systems and and cybersecurity and costs thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars just to do business to make sure no one's going to steal your stuff online. You know, I still print out important stuff on my printer from the internet. And people say to me, Ron, because that's my name, that's how they address me, they say, Ron, why, what are you printing it for? You don't have to print it. It's online. Yes, it is today. But what if the zombies and the robots and the cyber thieves and the cyber pirates shut down your computer or introduce a virus into it? I can take all the vitamin uh, E and, and vitamin D3 and oh, I can get all the you know, coronavirus uh, booster shots that I want, but uh, I can still get a computer virus. And those are horrible. You break out, your, your skin gets crazy, it's awful. 
It's a virus that we can't, we don't know it's coming. We don't, we can't, we can't do anything about it. You just try, you're constantly defending yourself of all these viruses that are coming. It's worse than the flu coming out of China because any minute there could be a, a computer virus and you don't know what the hell that is. And that means that you can't get into your computer or you lose files or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I feel secure with that. I print the stuff out. Then they say to me, Ron, because it's still my name, they say, Ron, you know, you should just uh, uh, upload all that kind of information to the cloud. Okay. Uh, and then I look out the window. Well, which one is mine? They all look the same to me. Maybe my cloud's the one that looks like a buffalo up there. The cloud. What if it rains? You're going to lose some of my information? If it rains and my information is in the cloud, you're going to have my, my information all over somebody's lawn somewhere when it's raining or a storm comes up and there goes my information. Well, I know that when we say the cloud, it's not a the cloud that you see in the sky. It's what? What, what, what is the cloud? It does, is it non-existent? Is it I cannot see it? I cannot touch it? How do I, I could, I could be, my backup system might not be working. What if my backup gets diseased? Do I need to have a backup for my backup? What if the backup for my backup gets diseased? Then I need a backup for a backup for my backup, but that doesn't work. That fails. They all, all the, oh, they all back up. They're all failing. Now you print it out and you put it in a file cabinet. Thank you so much. Look, the chances of somebody breaking into my house is possible, but not as probable as some kind of indiscriminate zombie virus hitting all my information. <laughs> That's feasible. You don't have to break into my house to steal stuff from me. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, you don't? Then what have I been talking about for the past 12 minutes? Now, the Internet. You know... If you were born before the internet became this "quote unquote" sophisticated, then you don't you don't trust this crap. If you were born after a certain date and all you know is the internet, well, I'm perfectly secure with that. Yes, because it's all you know. You don't know that before the internet there was life on this planet. There were dinosaurs. We didn't know them, but they were here at one point. I don't know. I don't know. There's a big thing going on in uh, in this country right now. If the show is as current as it should be, uh, there's uh, secure documents that are not so secured, uh, classified documents. You, if you don't know what's going on, then you really should know. It all started with that Trump guy who uh, apparently when he left office, he just took everything with him. And uh, there were documents in his house, in his mansion, in his closet, and his everywhere. But uh, when it was discovered that he had some, uh, the Justice Department and the National Archives said, can we have them back uh, if you made a mistake and took them? And Trump said, no, they're mine. Uh, no, I did nothing wrong, and you can't have them. And finally, you know, and there are subpoenas. No, I was the president. They can't subpoena me because all men are created equal except for me. And it was a problem. And then he lied and he said, I don't have any more. And he knew where they were. He talked about them. And then he said, no, I have them, but uh, you're not getting them. That was a problem. And that's still an ongoing situation. Then, just recently, you find out that uh, President Biden, some uh, classified documents were found in his home and at a, a national uh, office. Uh, that he uh, occupied. And uh, Biden claims, I didn't know I had them. Uh, they were put in boxes when I left as vice president. And um, that was a little while ago. And, uh, you know, I didn't know I had them. Take them back. Come get them. As a matter of fact, search everything I got. Make sure I don't have any more. They are yours. I, I, you know, I didn't know I had them. That's called cooperation. Now we find out uh, that uh, Vice President Mike Pence, former Vice President Mike Pence, 
some documents were found in his home. He voluntarily uh, contacted the government, uh, the Justice Department, and the National Archives and said, I've I've come across these things, didn't know I had them, but uh, because of what's going on, I had to check my own stuff, and I got them. Come get them. And they said, fine. Do you mind if we keep looking? He said, no, go on. I I don't want these things. I'm not supposed to have them. That's called cooperation. That's how the system works. Uh, Trump needed subpoenas to, uh, <laughs> which he fought tooth and nail to get anything from him. And among the 300 documents, a good percentage were the top secret things that are national security. You, that's like, no, 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 no. So there's your difference. One says, screw you. And the other two say, sorry, take, take them back. I, I, I shouldn't be having them. Then you come to find out, and we just learned this a couple hours ago, that uh, former President Jimmy Carter, well, he was president uh, before the turn of the century, uh, at least. Yeah, what a great guy he is, man. He's a guy, man. Uh, what a guy. I love him. Uh, as president, I don't know, maybe not so much, uh, uh, you know. But uh, after he was president, this man did not give up. He just did everything he could for the people. He's Habitat for Humanity. I mean, he just works his ass off for, for people, and he's not even the president anymore. I mean, uh, what a man. What a great man. Anyway, uh, you come to find out that back in those days, apparently uh, the government had found that Jimmy Carter had some of these classified documents in his home after he left uh, the White House, and uh, they got him back, and Carter said, yeah, I'm sorry, put in the box. I don't, I don't pack these things. You know, it's People just put them in boxes and we ship them out. I, I didn't know I had them. Is it fine? Apparently, this happens quite frequently. And it's not just to presidents and vice presidents. It could be to chief of staffs who work at the White House and also various uh, senators or Congress people. They're not supposed to have them, but they somehow, they, they do. There's so many of these papers. Our system of classified documents really is not very good. <laughs> it's, not, it's not very good. Nobody ever says, hey, wait a minute, where's document 173.7? Well, I don't know. That doesn't happen. They don't even know that they're missing sometimes or most of the time. We need a better system. So, yeah, I mean, I've moved from apartment to apartment, from house to house. We just put everything in boxes, and those are things we're doing. I mean, when you're a president or you work in the White House or in Congress or something, you have people just throw things in boxes. You don't even see what they're putting in the boxes. You just get the hell out of there. Said, hey, hey, guys, pack them. You have a staff that packs things up. Uh, they don't know if it's, they, they have no idea. That they can make mistakes. It's not, you know. Trump, on the other hand, yeah, I got them. You're not going to get them, no. You ain't getting them for me. I mean, you know, it's different. That's your classified document conversation on today's show. I figure if you listen to this show, you should learn something. Of course, don't take it from me. Take it from somebody else. I have no idea. I wanted to talk about something today in our waning moments. These are the moments to which I uh, observe wane. In these waning moments of the program, uh, this is very difficult to talk about, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, It's about charities. And they're not even scams. They are actual legitimate charities who won't leave me the hell alone. They have crossed over the line of asking for donations to literally stalking me. And it's really starting to, I I feel like I should be blocking them. Uh, This is junk mail that is so junky, and yet they're for organizations that are very significant. One of them is a children's cancer society. I don't know the exact name of it. I mean, oh my God, that's wonderful. And the other is the March of Dimes. They've been around forever. They do wonderful things to help people out. Two great charities. Leave me alone! You make me feel like once I donate to you, you will stalk me until my death. 
Ron, thanks for your donation uh, two months ago. You haven't donated anything since. Uh, you, are you alive? What the, what the hell's wrong with you? Don't you know that there are people hurting? What's wrong with you? Hey, I donated. Hey, hey, it's me. I donated. Leave me alone. These two organizations do something that really confuses me, and I don't like it, and I'm sorry. And I don't, I'm not downing the charities. I'm down, downing their marketing practices. They're just despicable. I don't do things because you make me feel guilty. That's manipulation, and I don't like to be manipulated. I don't care for that too much. These two organizations send me mail. And in the mail, you open up this uh, little envelope. Sometimes it's actually like in a see-through uh, envelope. And uh, they're sending me quarters and dimes in the mail. Yeah. They're sending me quarters and dimes to make me feel guilty. Look, they, they're asking me for money, and yet they're sending me money. What the hell's going on here? If you didn't send out five quarters to like 50 million people, think of all the money you'd have. Why are you spending your money? Well, Ron, that's called a marketing expense. No. If you're a charity and you're doing it for the children or for sick people, that's a not good way of marketing. That doesn't say much for you. How do you explain that? Well, about a year ago, on my radio program, I had the March of Dimes as a guest on my show. It wasn't to call them out for this topic, but we were talking about a drive that they were doing, and I'm always willing to help out. So I had some official from the March of Dimes on the program, and we talked. And toward the end of the interview, I said, listen, I'm going to ask you a question that's like off the beaten path here. And they said, oh, okay. So they said, oh, okay. And I said, why are you sending me dimes in the mail? Why are you soliciting money from me if you're sending me money? Am I supposed to just put a stamp on it and send your dimes back? I don't understand. Why do you do that? And they said, it's, a, it's something that we do for marketing and it's very successful. I said, it is? Yes, if we send out five dimes to somebody, they will typically send us back uh, 10 to $50. Why? Wouldn't they do that anyway? You have to send them money in order for them to send you money? Uh, their response was, oh, they're calling me now. They don't like this. Their response was, uh, <laughs> oddly enough, yes, it, it actually works, and uh, and we do that because it's a su successful campaign. They call it a campaign, you see. It's not a marketing ploy. It's a campaign. Now, again, I'm not downing these two charities. Other charities do this as well. And even if they didn't send me money in the mail, you need to get off my ass. You really do. I, I, I do donate on a fairly regular basis. I do not need you to push me along. Come on, come on, come on, pay up, pay up. Some charities will actually say, uh, uh, we donate a certain amount every year and we'll send you a bill every month. Don't, you don't send me a bill. No, I got enough bills in the mail. I don't need that. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, things have gotten out of hand completely, and uh, I'm not happy about it. I'm just not happy about it. Um, all right. Uh, we have a little bit of time before I, I leave. Uh, thank you so much, by the way, for being here. I, I don't know what I'd do without you. Yes, I do, actually. I'd still do the same thing. <laughs> uh, here, here's, the, here's the thing. Uh, I, I was doing an interview uh, last week with a, a consumer reporter who was at a, the, oh, it was the Javits Center in New York, which is a big convention center. And at this location, 
uh, he's there's a, it's a, an appliance uh, convention, and it's showing all the smart appliances for the upcoming year, which and many of them are available right now for consumers. And one of the things that he was hawking was a smart refrigerator, uh, smart appliances, and this was happened to be a smart uh, refrigerator. And in a joking manner, but also semi-seriously, I said to this uh, consumer reporter guy, I said, look, a smart appliance to me is an appliance that works when you turn it on. A smart refrigerator is a refrigerator that will keep the frozen stuff frozen and the refrigerated stuff refrigerated. That's about as smart as I need a refrigerator to be. I don't need a refrigerator to do calculus or to give me updates or to show me movies on a, uh, on a screen that's on, that's on the door, built into the door. I don't need that. And he said to me, Ron, here's one of the great things about uh, the smart refrigerator, who, by the way, is apparently a lot smarter than you are. I said, excuse me, stop it. He said, well, here, here it is. He says, if you're shopping in a supermarket and you don't know if you're out of milk, you can actually, there's cameras inside the refrigerator you can actually turn on the lights inside of the refrigerator without the refrigerator door being open. And it will, you can see the shelves and you can see if you're out of milk or not. On the screen, looking at your refrigerator at home, inside the refrigerator, and you're in the store and you can see what's inside your refrigerator to see if you're out of milk. And I said, well, you know, I, I'm sure you're a great uh, consumer reporter, but the milk's inside the carton. The carton sitting on the shelf gives me no indication if there's a little milk left or a full carton. Who's smart now? And the guy laughed as if I had made a joke, but I wasn't making a joke. It actually is stupid. I don't need to watch streaming movies on the door of my refrigerator. It's not important to me. I, I says, Ron, you know, you can actually get recipes on the screen on the door of the refrigerator. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I, I know that you might consider this to be under the category of convenience. To me, it's under the broad category of inanely stupid. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Then there's this product that I see on television. I don't know the name of it because I don't care. And apparently it's an oven, and it's like uh, $199, I think, to buy the oven. Or you can lease it, I guess. And it looks like a little microwave oven. You put it on your counter, and it's a smart oven. It's a smart thing, smart appliance. And if you are a lazy bastard who just doesn't know how to cook, doesn't have the time, doesn't have the interest, but needs the nutrition somehow, this appliance is for you. Apparently, uh, there's a little slot on the side or in the front of the this appliance, and uh, you pick out what you want to eat, and they send you food in the mail, and you put it in your smart refrigerator, and uh, you take out a little tray of this frozen food or whatever it is, and you open the door, put it in the refrigerator, and it comes with a little microchip card. Looks like a little card, an SD card or something. I don't know what it is. And the card goes into the slot, and the oven automatically turns on and cooks the thing at the proper temperature for the proper time and tells you when it's ready, and then you can eat it. In the dictionary under pathetic, you will see a picture of this smart appliance. Because it is pathetic. Very much so. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm out of time for today. I'll be back again uh, tomorrow or whenever. No, not tomorrow. Next week with a brand new show. But until that time arrives, I wish you peace.